Superman, the world's first superhero, has been depicted as a comic book, a radio show, a cartoon, and, thanks to two producers named Alexander and Ilya Salkind, a movie star. Ilya Salkind, the son of Alexander, set Superman into motion, a trend that would continue into the 21st century, whether it was in the movies or on TV. Hi, I'm Rennie Kama, and for two hours, I was able to conduct an interview with Ilya Salkin, who is the producer of Superman the Movie, Superman 2, Superman 3, Supergirl the Movie, and Superboy the TV series. For two hours, Ilya and I chatted on his pool patio, and we just talked about anything. From the days of working with his father to the untimely dismiss of the Superboy TV series. This is quite possibly the longest interview ever conducted with Ilya Salkind. I do hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. Um, can you tell me what actually inspired you to come up with the idea of making the Superboy TV show? Well, uh, there's an interesting um, uh, anecdote here because it's one of the rare ideas that I did not come up with uh, in the Superman family and of course doing Superman and then Supergirl and all that. Uh, it was somebody from Tribune who approached my father um, and said uh, you should do a TV show uh, on, on Superboy and we Tribune would be very interested. And then my father was um, uh, very interested also because the TV show right. and this. Uh, but he had a problem that he could not shoot um, anywhere else or, uh, because he didn't travel by train. Uh, he only traveled by train or car, and he wasn't really a physical producer. And at that point, uh, we had kind of separated work lives. I mean, uh, it was after Santa Claus the movie, and I had decided to uh, take a hiatus uh, with uh, my wife, then Jane Chaplin, and, and our first kid. Uh, too. And the fact is, uh, for wow. those who don't know Chaplin, it was Charlie Chaplin who was a very important figure in the wow. business. Yeah. But the fact that, I'm not saying that to be uh, flippant, but the, it's a fact. And uh, another fact that a lot of people don't know is that the father of the wife of Chaplin, Una Chaplin, was Eugene O'Neill, which is your greatest, in America, greatest playwright. And he is the wow. only playwright who got an actual Nobel Prize. Wow, wow. Eugene O'Neill. So, That's amazing. of course, imagine uh, they were both the same age, actually, O'Neill and Chaplin, they were 55, 56. And uh, Chaplin married uh, Una, her name, the daughter right. of O'Neill. Uh, and O'Neill was so angry because he was older and all that that he didn't talk to her anymore. And so that, that, that's not Superboy, but it's kind of fascinating yeah. because. An interesting family history. Yeah, it's an incredible it's, family. I mean, it is. Nobel it's Prize <laughs> and Charlie Chaplin is pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, yes, and, and uh, she was also. Uh, at the beginning, uh, when she was 17, the married at 18, mm -hmm. when she was 17, uh, she was one of the most prized debutantes in, in New York, but uh, right. uh, these balls were very much uh, uh, girls to marry, if you want, and they would meet <laughs> people. Exactly. Uh, debutante balls, I think they still have it. Uh, and she was very, uh, very much into that with Gloria Vanderbilt, uh, 
Yeah, I recognize her name. She's a big figure. Big figure. And the third one that was the water, uh, the water. <laughs> the, 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 I guess I'm looking at the pool, so I'm, I'm seeing <laughs> water, but you're not seeing it, but I'm seeing it. But anyway, uh, the fact is that um, the third debutante was um, Carol, who ended up marrying Walter Massa, who was a wow. big star. Yes, yeah, yeah. Very funny. We all know who he is. Very funny. He's a big actor. Yeah, he was a very good actor. So anyway, that's the, that story. But um, so we were in Madrid, uh, where I decided that I would really, you know, kind of decompress and decide what I would do and what other picture. Uh, and my father had um, a big problem because he wanted to do Super Bowl, but he could not physically produce it because he wasn't a physical producer, hands-on, and he didn't travel by plane. So he was stuck because the Warner deal uh, from the original, or, or, origin, 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 or, from the origin of Superman, the film, with DC Comics, who owned the rights, there was an enormous 50-page contract, and that contract said that any movie based on Superman, Supergirl, and Superman, we had bought the entire wow. the entire collection of the comic books. Oh, uh, they didn't know what they had. Not only that, we didn't know what we had either because wow. uh, that's a side again, but it's fascinating is that we could have, according to the contract, used any actor any character superhero right. that has appeared, that had appeared in a Superman episode comic book. Which means, wow. as you well know, uh, because you are a fan, yeah. uh, we could have made a second movie with Batman, a third one with Green Lantern. Did, did that ever cross your mind to make one yes. with Batman? In Batman, yes. We that would have been great. I wanted to do it, and uh, uh, my father got nervous. I was too complicated. Right. Imagine right. what the, uh, wow, would have been pretty epic. The third picture could have been Superman bad. Yeah. Because we had the right. We had the Aquaman. And now they're talking about it. Now. Well, now you know, they're doing it. There's buzz over the internet. Exactly. You know? so, so we already had the idea, but the fact is. Uh, Got scared, right, right. and the first one was a huge hit. The second one was a huge hit. It's like, wow. You've well, always been ahead of your time, and and people kind of step away from that, you know, because they feel like they're not ready. But you're like, let's go do it. <laughs> well, it's a very good comment. I mean, it, I, I'm not ahead of my time. I think I just think out of the box. And that's a good way of putting it. Right. I, I think I think out of the box without losing a pragmatic, down-to-earth approach, meaning that if I do a film that has a lot of subtext, which is intelligent, right. uh, the first level has to be popcorn, it has to be simple, it's right. got to work for everybody. The subtext will work in the collective subconscious, which we all share. Exactly. That's exactly. So psychology 101. And the fact is that, uh, okay, uh, Superman, imagine how much, besides he flies and what you see and the action, all, but the subtext is basically Jesus Christ coming exactly, to save yeah. the world. Yeah, the Savior. Uh, he is the Savior. Then he loses his power. And he's got and his father. And, and the father exactly. is God. And Zod Tomorrow is the Brando. devil. Right. I mean, and this was, we, we wrote it yeah, with that yeah. in mind, but in a way where it was above, uh, let's say, the normal audience, but subconsciously they would get it. Right. Because right. It's, in, it's ingrained in all of us. And, uh, right. and that's one of the big uh, lessons that I've learned is that if you have uh, five elements in a film, uh, which are, and, and 
might always forget one or add one, I don't know, but uh, tension, uh, fear, humor, emotion, love, that's four, and the fifth is, uh, it goes with tension, it's a suspense, emotion, love, and drop. Right, right. Yeah, real, real Gotta real, have drama. Real drama. And your movies did, they had... Well, Lois Lane dies, and yeah. why you thought we were nuts, but... Superman flying around the world, I mean, that gets me every time. Well, <laughs> it's, it's a comic book film, I mean, let's face it. Now, of course, what happened is, where I thought out of the box was... I wasn't even at those levels yet of, of angel, I mean, of dark. Uh, if you notice, the villains are in black. Yeah, And yeah. all the Plutonians are in white. That's right, that's, that's right. It's very symbolic, very symbolic. Tremendously symbolic. I mean, that... It's that, good attention to detail, too, you know, it's like... Well, a, it is, but it's also that subconsciously people have been used to, or... They'll understand or, it when they'll see or, it, right? Or, or have learned to, to church or parents that black is bad, white is good. Right. Everybody gets it. The plumber gets it. The taxi driver. Well, even gets Darth it. Vader, you know, is all wears black. White so. and Luke is white. Until Return of the Jedi, when he's tempted to turn and to the dark has, side. Yeah. I mean that, that, that George George Lucas was brilliant. Yeah, he's. And actually, he defined for me the, my beliefs in general, which are, you know, the force, the good force and the bad force. That's, that's, that's amazing. How, you know, I'm in a, what's called an agnostic, meaning I don't believe in any church, but I do believe in the good and the bad. Right. But it is... In kind of like an all-powerful force. That is... That's everywhere. unlimited. There is no beginning, there is no end. Right. And once I accepted the fact that I couldn't understand it, because nobody can understand. Why well, right. you go to a door and you open it, and then there's another door, and you open it, and there's another door, and it never stops. What do you mean? It has right. to start somewhere. <laughs> no, it never Because it's infinite. It's exactly. infinity from beginning to end, but there's no beginning and no yeah. end. Yeah. So it, 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 this is intelligent stuff I'm saying here. You, know, you can use that for my PhD book. No, and the fact is, it right. really is uh, symbolically uh, something that everybody understands. Uh, I mean, agnostic and taking it right. one step ahead. You seem like a very spiritual person. Yeah, but I also believe in aliens. I believe in all that. So I'm yeah. a little more, more borderline to that, uh, but the, the, the main force in the film, uh, Star Wars, black, white, clear, Zod, black, marlin, white, clear, I mean, so those were very defined choices. Right, and all the Imperials were British too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that was something uh, going on there. It's no, probably just frankly uh, equity. The tax is, cuts. <laughs> no equity, which is the right. union of the actors in England. And we had too many Americans. Right. Because we shot in England, the country. Exactly. Important. It worked great, though. I mean, you oh, know, we saw it with the accent. I mean, it. No, but we also shot in New York. We shot in uh, Canada. We had, uh, yeah. Youth. Yeah. But anyway, to 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 go back to Superboy. Um, my father was then stuck. So he called me in and said, Look, uh, uh, I, do you want to do a, a, a TV show on the Super Bowl? Uh, I said, oh, what the, Who had the idea? That's not a bad idea. It wasn't mine. Indeed. So I'm even honest and tell the truth. I'm candid. I'm candid. <laughs> I said, um, yeah, it could be in uh, TV. I've never done TV, but uh, yeah, I guess it's just jumping in the pool and swimming. You know, jumping just go in the with sea it. and swimming, you know. Uh, you manage, you learn. 
Did you think it would have been as successful as it turned out to be? Um, I thought it had a, a good uh, potential, but I definitely didn't think... Uh, it's a very interesting question because uh, we're talking now 88. Right. And I think, I believe, after the catastrophe of Superman 4 that was not produced by my father and myself. <laughs> Uh, Canon films. It was Canon films. And we all know that he story. Famously took all the money and right. the film. That's a disaster. And made the other Christopher it Reeve movie as well. The franchise. Right. That film killed the franchise because everybody attacks three. Three got some of the best reviews of the three films. Time magazine, Newsweek. Uh, I even remember the time he said, it's a pity there's no more footage from the sequel. Two, three. It had Richard Pryor in it, too. It was well, a mega star in 83. Uh, uh, well, uh, no, in those days it made uh, 70, which was, uh, was number five of the year. Uh, and uh, if you put it with the inflation of the money uh, today, it would have been 150 box office. Uh, so it was a huge hit comparatively. It was exactly. on on time, no problems, nothing. And, um, and they, okay, there were some mistakes that were done, but uh, I don't think anything that uh, uh, I mean, that affected the, that they wouldn't have been done it might have done perhaps a little more, but uh, I had a treatment for Super, uh, Superman 3, uh, which was much more cosmic. With, uh, right, right, and, yeah. And uh, Warners, who was only the distributor of the picture because my father was a wizard of money, money to finance these gigantic pictures, uh, however, had a lot of influence because Warners and yeah. Specialists and uh, how and all this is stupid. That and somebody there saw Richard Pryor on TV and he was making a, a Superman number. Of the he said he wanted to be in Superman. I'd love to be in one right. of those. And they called, oh, get Pryor, who was the biggest star in the world. He was five million. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The biggest star in the world, actually. Uh, I mean, one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah. Uh, well, the so toy was big before Superman 3 came was out. It was a major big. hit. It was very big. Right. Uh, I, I, big, 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 big. And, uh, what, five million? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, three. Well, your casting choices in all your films, I mean, even Superboy have been amazing. Yes, I but, mean, sometimes but, you just drop your jaw at some of these people that show up. You know, what happens... And he's in the Superboy episodes. Yeah, but uh, that, uh, I'll talk about Superboy at length now, but uh, you asked me how it started, and... I had the idea. I, I didn't have the idea, but I did like the idea. It was a challenge, feminism, I don't know. It was finance. But as with my father and I, we did not see eye to eye on many uh, business uh, uh, financial decisions. I yeah. said, I will do it, but I'm only a producer. Uh, I don't want to be in any company. I don't want to sign anything. Another guy, a line producer, can sign the checks. I will just make it as exact producer, which in television is the overall chief. The executive producer in television uh, prepares the script, prepares the shooting, shoots. While he's shooting, he's preparing, finishing the first one and starting another one. So it's basically three films a day. It's a lot of work, and I was alone, and it was crazy, but I managed. And the first episodes were not that great, then they got better and better, and um, that was uh, positive. But I said to my father, and I want a very uh, big salary, uh, pay, paid in advance. <laughs> and uh, You had to always get it in advance from your dad, huh? <laughs> well, I would learned the lesson there. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, my dad was great, but uh, he was tough. Yeah, sometimes yeah. he was a care. businessman by heart, by nature. Well, he had his reasons. Uh, he 
escaped the Germans. Or the yeah, Germans. exactly. Yeah. Been, although, yeah. So I think they have a different mentality than those survivors. They're, they're tough or they're completely destroyed. Right, I mean, right. They're tough, they're tough. Really. Yeah. But really respected here by you know, clever lawyers and right. business affair right. guys. They all admire that. Even when they screwed them the world. Right, right. They absolutely admire it. And, um, well, this is stuff I've never given to anybody, you know. Uh, really, this, this, this kind of uh, thing about my father. Or, yeah, Or even yeah. the, 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 why I did really Super Bowl without signing uh, the contracts with the actors and all that. And there was all back history. and. And the fact is, is to finish that, uh, I had lunch um, in uh, 2004, I think, uh, 2006, with uh, John Schulman, who was the head counsel at Warner, and he was in charge of dealing with my father. And we had breakfast, uh, not lunch, breakfast very early, and, and uh, he said to me, uh, you know, Ilya, there's something that I really miss. I said, what, John? And he said, well, the dad, because he was the best. Right, right. Now, this is coming from the enemy. Right. Boy, from Warner, right? Warner was fighting. And he That's said, interesting. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. And he said, he was the best. I said, come on, Dino. God bless the soldiers passed away. The right, right. And, other guys, he says, ah, Dean and there, Alex, says, ah, Alex, what's the best? And I yeah. feel bored because I don't have him. Right. And it was very touching because, you know, you know it's, it's like in the army or the war, when the enemy can recognize that the other enemy is the adverse, advert. That's quite a compliment. The adverse. Right. Um, the ad how do you say the adversary? No, the, um, the opponent. The adversity is, or? The opponent, I mean, the, the, the soldier in front. The competition? Yeah, well, I mean, that the one yeah, soldier can exactly. admit that the other mean, soldier yeah. is as good or better than him. And that's a bit one. It's always hard to admit that. Right, and he yeah, But when we, But when they do, that's very and amazing. It was very right? nice. Uh, and the other thing that Warren uh, did, which was interesting, is. When we bought the rights in '73, uh, I found out later at breakfast with uh, John Kelly, who was then president of, of, of Warner's, a uh, very nice man. And, right. and he said, You know, Elia, we're going to tell you something that I don't think I've been told. And uh, something obviously pretty intimate, but uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, when they called me from New York DC Comics, and they said, hey, there are these Europeans who did the Musketeers. It was a huge hit, the first, the first European film to go on a million. It was an enormous hit. Uh, they want to buy the rights of Superman, what do we do? And uh, John Kelly uh, said, uh, sell it. It's absolutely a piece of bleep bleep. Wow. He told me that, which is I remember also, reading that in a book. It, right. It's also sh showing uh, the integrity of that man who was able to admit that... He was wrong. And when time. he did Spider-Man, when he was in Columbia, I, I sent him a <laughs> telegram and I said, John, or an email, uh, John, uh, this time uh, you, you didn't miss it. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, learned his lesson, right? Yeah, right. Very, very nice guy. Yeah. Well, there's totally a market for children, you know, for this stuff. I mean, look at George Lucas with Star Wars, with all the toys. 20th Century Fox just said, "Hey, you could have all the toy rights. We don't care. You're not going to make anything anyway." But they were wrong, and now he's making billions of dollars off. The same thing with the Superman films; they were major hits. Oh, you know? uh, uh, Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, but no, no studio wanted the picture. Yeah, yeah. And somehow he managed to finance it. Uh, yeah, Alan Ladd. Yes. Right. Alan Ladd Jr. Right. Yes. No, uh, 
It's very interesting. Though. Luca yeah. is a very clever guy. Business wise, as well. And but, you guys all came out at the same time. You, Lucas. Well, and it's interesting. I read uh, on the internet in one of those articles, which I don't know if it's a book or another book, but uh, where he tells his whole story, and he says. Uh, verbatim, more or less, he says, uh, um, in 73, uh, father and son, Alexander and Ilya, uh, Falcon came up with the idea to make a big movie about a comic book. And this was before Jaws and before Star Right, Wars. right. So we had, and I must say that with a certain Right, we were the first to think the big thing. Because right. what was the idea of Jaws or Star Wars? It's Star Wars is a little sci-fi. Make it big. Right. Jaws, it's a fishing story, but make it real. Right. Big. You and guys were thinking blockbuster in nineteen seventy three. We were thinking before them because we started right. it and it took us so long with all the problems we had. That yeah, yeah. Star Wars came uh, eight months before, and uh, right, Close right. Encounters came, uh, I think, uh, more or less at the same time. Uh, a little bit before. Uh, and Jaws movie, came but, before, yeah. uh, but in '73, if we had had a normal director and we would have had a normal situation, uh, we would have definitely. Uh, been the first guys to come out in 74 yeah. with the blockbuster. But you guys were trying for a 77 release. I know that. Well, just, that was after because yeah. we were going later and later. You <laughs> we were doing later. two movies back to back. Yes, but we were also uh, inundated with problems about the flying. Right. Uh, uh, direct that to chain. Couldn't get the Superman. A whole lot of problems. So yeah. we. Postponed, 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 but finally it came out. But it was really the first germ of the idea to take something small, a little sci fi picture, a little right, fishing right. story, a little alien story, and make it big. In making it to Blockbuster. Yeah. And, and we had started a bit with Musketeers already because suddenly here's a movie with yeah, 20 stars, yeah. you know, and all that. Now, there are, let's not forget, Poseidon and, which were blue before, and Towering Inferno. Right. And those guys, it's interesting because, in a way, they did the same thing, but on trivial projects. Burning building, <laughs> uh, or uh, yeah. Poseidon, the boat goes like that. And if you think about it, it wasn't new. They just made them big, but they made them big like Ben Hur or like El right, Cid right. before. It didn't quite have the same formula that it didn't have the yeah. formula of unknown to suddenly gigantic. Right, right. Which and with John Williams, them. music, even the music score was huge. It was just you know well, for Superman the movie. For that. You, John Williams can't beat that. I mean, he can't beat that. I would say. Really, fifty percent of the yeah, he did everything. The movie Jaws is, is, is brilliant, uh, right? And brilliant. Gotta give a lot uh, of credit to him. We had tremendous amount of talent. Uh, we had guys from two thousand one, guys from Star Wars, guys from uh, uh, Williams. Uh, exactly. So the first encounter. So we, we had everybody. We had a bond with Derek Meddings. That's right. That's right, Derek Meddings. We had an incredible crew. I mean, I, I, and the cameraman had done 2001. And the special effects was innovative. I mean, when you think They're of Superman, big. prior to Superman the movie, you think of George Reeves flying, and you're just like, oh my gosh, that's so bad, you know? But then flying you watch the Superman carpet. the movie, and you, it's like a double take. It's like, it looks real. Yeah. It's like he's really flying, and it is really. And I saw that movie when I was six years old. You know, I've probably told this story many times, but my mom took me to the theater for my sixth birthday, and I asked her, "I go, is it in black and white? And does the flying look real?" <laughs> That's what I asked him. And I saw that movie, and Ilya, I was just like, 
my eyes popped out of my head. My jaw just dropped. I was just hypnotized well, all the way know, throughout the whole movie. <laughs> I must say, by the way, I give them credit. Uh, somebody at Warner's came up with the great phrase, we'll believe in that one thought. Well, that was not my idea. Was somebody there. Somebody at Warner's. Publicity, so. I don't know. Uh, I think it was Andrew Fulminson who actually came up with it. Right. But it was brilliant. And, uh, and, uh, and they were right. You I mean, the they flying looked it, real, you know. Great line, and and they also came with the first teaser, where you just saw the names coming out of the clouds. Wow! Oh wow. yeah, yeah. Wow. That was a good teaser. A fantastic teaser. And at the end, Superman. And the fact is, it was such a fantastic teaser. That this is a fun story. That uh, a very good friend of mine, producer here, uh, very successful, had. A film that was uh, previewing, and they were testing the audience. Yeah. In the same theater where where they were going to test the teaser, which was 40 seconds, and um, uh, it was a pretty big film. I mean, I can't remember. I mean, not enormous, but it was 30, 40 million dollar film then. Um, and. Um, he told me the story when we met here, we met in, uh, in L.A. in 2000, and he said, um, you know, everybody's sitting down, and suddenly comes this Paula Brandler, so, so, you know. <laughs> Star power flying this, out of the this class. thing, and then, and the audience, he told me, the mic, he told me the audience went bizarre, crazy, unbelievable. And then, when his picture came up, the preview picture, they, right. they started breaking chairs because they <laughs> thought they were going to see the movie three years before wow. it was finished. That's great. That, That's that, great. That, that, <laughs> I think some people probably went to the theater just to see that trailer. It you know? was incredible. They're it, probably it, like, it, oh, it, it's, it, it's the trailer's on this movie. And uh, they probably went to see that movie just to see the trailer. But th this was a teaser. It was it was just right. a teaser, which is in the big box. Uh, yeah, in all the boxes. Yeah. That I think it is. it's on YouTube, or it might be on no, YouTube. No, no, but on, it is on, on the yeah. Superman box. Yeah, I've the, seen it. DVD, it, it, it is. It's but, a great teaser. Um, it was completely crazy, but they went nuts. The, the fans, I mean, they, they couldn't, they couldn't believe it. And then when they saw right. the other picture, which was some kind of a teenage story, you know. You know Fury and, and really <laughs> rioting on this. It kind of reminds me of the season one opening of Superboy, you know, where he's flying over the bridge in Florida. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Kind of has a little bit of that feel to it. You know, you don't really see much of John, but it kind of teases you. You know, you just see him flying around. Yeah, well, that's kind of cool. So, so we're back to Superboy, and of course, that's uh, the main uh, idea of the interview. And, and Superboy, uh, okay, after I made my deal with my father, um, uh, for a very hefty salary per episode, uh, I, uh, no percentages, because they, they <laughs> You knew you wouldn't get them. <laughs> uh, It'd be some kind of fudgy math in there somewhere. Very fudgy. <laughs> and so, uh, I went, uh, and I had a line producer that, we hired and, and I sent them to look around for locations and first and, and uh, he went to Texas and uh, they got studios and some advantages and they went to Florida where they were building Universal Florida, right. the Wright and studios and Disney had already a uh, facility, they had a studio. <laughs> so I we, this guy told me, yeah, this and that, and well, it's about the same prices. Oh, over Florida might be better because there's no tax, and local tax, etc. I don't know. Anyway, I said, I don't know. Florida, Disneyland, I might end up making deals with these guys. This, this is more interesting than Texas. Really. There's nothing. Yeah. And so we decided Florida, and the first season was shot at Disney. Right. Right. And um, this is another first. I'm going to give you. I was shot at, at Disney. Uh, I went well, except the first three, four episodes, as I've said before, 
were not so great, although they were doing a fantastic rating, they were doing 5-9, which is uh, 6 million people. Uh, the first episode opened, 6 million people. Uh, wow. And I was ecstatic. Those are good numbers. Enormous. That's excellent no, no, wait, numbers for TV. Syndication. For syndication. Syndication. That's, syndication. that's outrageous. If you do a half a point, you, you're a genius in syndication. Because wow. then the, you had four or five shows like um, um, The Price is Right, uh, uh, what was it, Jeopardy, uh, all those right. were the number ones on syndication. They were uh, uh, number one, two, three, I mean, they, they were all those. And Superboy came up as number 12. Right. Live action. All the rest was not the shows, but no wow. action shows. Then they did leave it to Beaver after, and then they, they, they started doing the Star Trek right. and all that. But the bottom line is that we we, we were in syndication with the biggest live action show. So I was ecstatic, and um, I had absolutely, uh, completely constructed the show in the sense that I picked up the cast, uh, picked up uh, the writer, uh, picked up the... Uh, Okay, the studios, uh, and I was involved uh, in all the music, all that stuff. But I right. left a little bit the stories to to the writer, uh, who was a very nice man who worked on Star Trek, the original uh, Fred Fabrier, God bless his soul. But um, he had a tendency to do stories that were a little down to earth and. and, and, and too realistic. Too realistic, too, right. too, too mundane right. with little crooks and things. And right. Th that, that's not, you know, uh, what what Superboy is, but it was doing a 5-9. Exactly. those stories. Yeah. And the second one did another 5-9. And the third one up. And that, then that's when I got that letter, which you were mentioning. Right. With, on the with, You mentioned it on the DVD uh, set, right? And I mentioned it now with, 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 with the... Uh, uh, Stacy, Stacey. right? Uh, and uh, my my best souvenir was that I got these letters. Suddenly, uh, the Viacom guys called me and said, "Yeah, yeah, you read the letters. I mean, that's uh, terrible." So send me the letters. <laughs> so I read the letters and say, "What is this? Uh, you know, Salkin doing? He, he's doing shit shows. I mean, this is not a great show. This is a terrible show." With the five yeah. lines, it was still a huge hit. I would have to admit it kind of had a different feel than Superman, than your Superman movies. Those first few shows. It had a look. It was it was pedestrian. It was right. it was like doing uh, uh, Miami Vice. Uh, right? I mean, but you said you weren't well. really involved that creatively until you stepped in. I yeah. wasn't that involved. I would kind of vaguely read the scripts, but I wasn't really working with Fred, who was the only writer. Right. And uh, okay, it looked all right. I, I would put guest stars. I came up with the idea, however, about two or three shows in, that each show should be a little movie uh, with its own right. Right. complete. A story and music, everything. Superboy was good at doing that. That's yeah, but that that started still before the letters, and it was doing very well, as I said. Right. But when I read those letters, I called back Vaca. Uh, I said, "What are you complaining? Okay, the letters are bad, but the, the show is doing a five nine. What do you what do you want?" I said, yeah, but it's, it's terrible. It looks bad. I mean, <laughs> so that kind of woke me up. And, and then I got much more involved uh, in the right. day by day right. writing situation. And, uh, and the then show definitely improved. It definitely, definitely. improved. And uh, the first 13 were picked up, or the second right. 13, the 26 was uh, the first with Newton. And uh, definitely, uh, of course, I started to put aliens and I started to. Right, to, right. To go back to... to Alien the, Solution. Yes. Yeah. To go back to, to the real mythical universe. Mr. Mitzpitalik. Uh, exactly. And those were some really good episodes. All that. Uh, absolutely. That's when the fun stuff started coming in, and I do remember I enjoyed the show a lot more. 
I mean, there's just oh, no, one after, to see all I would characters. say uh, it shifted. Uh, yeah, but Alien was, I would say, the first really good one. That, yeah. Uh, the others, there were some good ones, but they were still a little bit extra. But uh, and Stacy did a knockout performance fantastic. in that episode. Fantastic. She put uh, the glass up to her neck, and <laughs> and, and John was great too. I mean, yeah. And, uh, and so, um, uh, of course, after that, I brought in Carrie Bates, uh, the comic book writer, to work with Fred, uh, story consultants, both, and me. And then, of course, we started doing more and more right. a, la, a, la, a la Superman Universe stuff, right. which I should have pushed on Superman 3, but I didn't, and I didn't fight enough. I'm, third movie. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Brainiac storyline. Yes, right. I mean... Uh, that was an incredible story. No, but I even I, I, I accepted certain things in the film that I would not have accepted uh, at the beginning, because I think it was a third, and I was a bit, you know, se sequelitis. I mean, was we kind of invented the sequels with all these guys, but we were really yeah. the first ones who invented it in the movie already. Exactly. Starting with two. I mean, three is still good, you know. I mean, I like. I'm happy with how it turned out. Well, three is is uh, it gets better with age, I was going to say. But <laughs> but uh, the, the the two big mistakes was the actor that played uh, the villain in three was wrong. I wanted Frank Robert Frank Langella, and a uh, fantastic actor, and uh, right, I wanted right. to do it. But the director said no. I cannot work with him. There is no way. I would not. I would walk. I mean, that bad. He just could not work with this man. Wow. So what happened between them? I don't know. But I ended up under pressure thinking Robert Vaughn was a good actor and all that. But he didn't have the charisma and size of, of, of Langella. Langella would have right. would have would have made prior less important. He would have balanced it more, and then Superman right. would have come more. See, because the actor, I mean, look at Brando, you know, that's a big example, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, Langella, I don't know if you pronounce Langella or Langella, but, uh, you exactly, know, he yeah. fills the screen. He had presence. He's got presence, some, and, some and kind of Bond presence. has to act as presence. It's not the same thing. And, I see what you're saying, yeah. And, and, and uh, Langella, uh, well, Angela would have, I know, uh, would have, Increase ten percent, fifteen percent of results because it would have been a major right. thing. And right. and uh, the other thing I was against, but I didn't fight enough, was the opening of the uh, Elsa Pop and stuff. Of things oh, falling, which the was Richard very, the Richard Lester uh, uh, yeah touch of, circus uh, kind of yeah, opening, yeah. <laughs> uh, which now a lot of people like because of course if you look it's at it, it's pretty. Outrage. I mean, it's, it's really funny. I mean, very well done. Yeah. And music, by the way, of Ken Thorne is fantastic. There. I don't think you'll ever see an opening like that in a movie. It, it's <laughs> pretty think. crazy. It's yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, but it was too crazy at that time. It was so. Yeah. Should have stayed. A lot. A lot of people were kind of like, "This is too silly," you know. And the third big fight I lost once they took away the idea of, the, of me doing the Brainiac, mixing Pinlick and Supergirl. Uh, show which is on the on the net, right? It's four pages or five pages I wrote, and um, actually I, I I on Facebook there's a guy who wrote to me three days ago and he said your idea of uh, the treatment that you did before three uh, with mixing pinlick and all that was fantastic. Uh, that's fine. Right, right. And you wrote fantastic, you know, bold. <laughs> and yeah, in a way, yeah. he was right, because it would have been mind boggling. And Superman did fall in love with Supergirl, but they didn't know they were cousins. Oh. So it was very well explained. That's but of course, it was a treatment that I knew where we were going to go. Right. And uh, the other thing where I lost uh, the battle was um, that I had Brainiac controlling Superman, becoming evil or not evil. Right. Should have gotten the story credit uh, those days. Uh, A lot like Dark Side uh, in the comic. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I, 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 I,
completely based on my, my Yeah, but it's total comic book. I mean and, and, and he, he uh, Brainiac would control Superman with a button. Make him evil, make him good. Which the kids would have been understood. So we lost right. the kids. They were afraid. They didn't understand Superman being and the robot at the end also was over the top. Yeah. Okay. But well, I Vera think the robot really would scary. have worked <laughs> if we would have understood as kids right. that Superman is dominated by Brainiac's power. Right. Evil, good. The schizophrenic, brother, that, that got a little too intellectual. I know it's been said in many places that it's possibly one of the best secrets of the first two films. Right. By far, because I don't mention the. Sounds fourth. a little more complicated than the than the kryptonite, you know. Just so let's give him some kryptonite. Oh, now he's becoming evil. You know? No, no. Here he. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, it that certainly was complicated. Worked, you know? It was weird, and the kids didn't get it. They, they didn't understand why they they couldn't get the kryptonite stuff. They were four, five, six year old. They, they just see what you know what they understand. So they see a mean Superman. Superman can't be me. Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't understand that that was actually in the comic books, but it's red kryptonite in the comic books is what made him evil. And so I saw the movie first, and then when I started reading the comic books, getting into the comic books, I was like, it should have been red in Superman 3. The kryptonite should have been red. <laughs> yeah, I know, but the, but there we deliberately... But I guess uh, the audience wouldn't have understood that. No, it might, some guys might, but the, but we, what we wanted to do with uh, uh, the kryptonite uh, and all that was, uh, that was lessons. But you got it right in Superboy. The yeah, kryptonite yeah. was red in Superboy. It was red in Superboy, yeah. But, but the fact is, with, with, with uh, Lesser... Uh, he liked to push a bit the absurd, and of course it was very funny to have prior right. uh, just do this and forget that tar or whatever he's missing and it creates that. So it was more a <laughs> gag that turned out horrible, but uh, that's why I, I don't think we went to the right kryptonite uh, deliberately, right. because also we wanted to take from the comics, but stay away from the comics. So do you think Superboy, the TV series, was more faithful to the comics than the movies were? Uh, no, I think uh, it was uh, after episode 7, 6, uh, definitely became very much like, uh, like the comic books with the more interesting subtext, with the deeper meaning and and also, um, as I said, one level that people could get, everybody, and then another level, uh, kids, etc., and another level which was more adult. And if right. you look at episodes like Young Dracula, which I wrote, right, and, that's a great Kodo, episode. <laughs> and uh, the, the other one, uh, uh, what's the, the second one is called? Uh, one is Young Run, Dracula, Dracula, Run. Run, Dracula, Run. That was, which was even better than Young Dracula. That, that, for me, it, Superboy that turned into a vampire. <laughs> and, and, and I like Lana's dress, too. I'm a girl, so I like Lana's about dress. <laughs> the sexuality that was in there. Yes. How sexy it was. The two vampires It was kissing. amplified. <laughs> I mean, my God. I don't know how the censorship let, let us go with that. That was really very Jose risque. Well, that's what made Superboy so great. I mean, it's and the kids, certainly... The kids, the kids would go with it because somehow it, they didn't get that. Right. Same right. thing as Superman when she says, in what color is my underwear? And it's mm, lead. <laughs> I can't see through lead. And then she'd be right. quiet. Pink. No, that's a very sexy thing. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. And then she moves back in front of the lead. And she moves back. The planter, it. yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, you know, so we got away with a lot of yeah, uh, yeah. sexual overtones. Actually, on, 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 on Superboy. But that's a good element. I mean, you I, could... I def definitely, uh, when, what, once I got the, 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 the cool speed with the right writers, 
and doing really the Superman universe, um, I still insisted on the Salkine universe, which is a lot of uh, mute and sub buried sexuality throughout the show. Right. And if you look at all the episodes, you will always see under it, because if you look at it like a kid, okay, play. But under it, you will see constant things that are very sexual. You know, it's interesting that you call it the Salkind universe, because I know a lot of like fans who are just everything Salkind. They don't like any other Superman movies unless it has your father's, wow. you and your father's name on it. So, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm kind of like that too, but only because your movies are better. I mean, Alexander Ilya Salkind. I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't think anyone can ever outdo what you and your father did. Not even well, with the Superboy you know, series. I mean, I had my problem with my father, but I must give him uh, the greatest compliment to the fact that yeah. he had courage and uh, to, to follow an <laughs> idea where I just, out of the blue, comic book, let's make a big movie. Yeah. And, and believe and then give me the responsibility and it was fantastic. Yeah. And, wow. You know, and he did it. And, wow. and, and, and that's why, of course, uh, we ended up with the first one. And the others, one thing all the directors agree, uh, he never chins on a, on a dollar more to get that stuff. Right. Like, dude, I would say, look, we'd like to have more of that or a special plane. Uh, Your dad was great at that, getting money he when he needed it for the movie. the movies to be the best. Right. And uh, he, he had a tendency for absolutely doing a real movie, not just the money. Yeah, yeah. Getting the star power. He was much more of a gambler. Uh, right. Just a gambler, like, like I am. Like a lot of creative guys are, where he, well, he was creative in the money, but he had a right. sense of film, which started with his father, who was also the film. Michael Salkine, yeah, right. He did Garber. the silent films. Yeah, it was Greta Garbo, a major star in the world, and uh, he discovered it. But the fact is, uh, that was, uh, we never chinced on the three films, on any of them. Would, uh, lose uh, the quality. Uh, right. You never forsake the quality to save money. That's Absolutely. good. You were right That's on. good. And uh, the fans got it. Now, once, once the fans started to, when, when I appeared after my uh, lawsuit with uh, Warner, where we settled uh, because they had made a mistake, uh, which I won't get into that. Because it's, I guess, confidential, but right. there, there was a mistake that Don, although my father had sold the rights in 93, because my father and I were having a few, and uh, he didn't want right. to win and get the rights, so he sold them. And, and that's when Superman went into development hell for a long time. Into, that was the end of that. And uh, that was in 93. And after right. uh, 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 Warner sabotaged, our Superman 5, we had written with Bates and oh, really? Carrie and Bates and Mark That's Jones. too bad. And it was fantastic. Superman was born. Now, did you have, uh, you mentioned once that there were talks of Gerard playing Superman. No. If, if I, Reed I, I, wouldn't have taken the cape, would you have approached Gerard? Uh, no. Frankly not, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very... Uh, clear on, 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 on what we're doing and what the characters are, and, and Superman is 6'4", Superboy is 5'8". Right. In the comic books. Right, right. So, John and John are a little taller than 6 feet, but they're not 6'4". Exactly. And Super 6'4", it's still this much taller than a guy who's 6 feet. So he has to be 6'4". <laughs> What, six three? Right. With, with with heels, you know. I mean, that that. I mean, Chris made it, you know. He, yeah, he was perfect. He was, he was certainly a huge tall. Guy. He was right. Six, four. And uh, when you 
built to it. Did you see the boots for Superman Returns? What they did, it looked like Brandon Ralph is standing on uh, stilts, stilts or something. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah, they're horrible. Yeah, I met that <laughs> man, Brandon. They were everywhere. Yeah, you didn't meet him. That's nice, great. Very yeah, nice oh, guy. he's a great guy. But he's six two. He's not six four. Wow. They have to build him up. You uh, noticed Reeve was taller, huh? Oh, yeah. A lot taller, yeah. Well, uh, Reeve was uh, six four. It's really hard to find Reeve, I, as I recall. So, how much harder Hard was to it find to find guys who can act? And, uh, yeah, and have all those qualities too. I bet. Yeah, that's what makes casting Superman so difficult. But you lucked out so many times. I mean, you found Reeve, then you found John, then you found Gerard. How hard was it to find John well, and then Gerard? Uh, John, it was an absolute uh, uh, genius that uh, now doesn't work so much, but uh, he's the Vince Soul Master casting, like you know, a very nice right. guy. And he uh, found John somewhere, and uh, John tested, and I was in Spain still. Oh, okay. And he sent me the test, uh, and uh, um, I said, he's good. He can do it. And, okay. And, and of course, I was there when the suit, and so that's why the suit's perfect. I mean, it's... No, I'm very perfectionist. On, on, on that side, right. I was totally involved. The, the, the scripts to where I was a bit lazy exactly. in the beginning. Uh, and Gerard was the same thing. I mean, you know, walking the room. Okay. Ooh, it like was it kind of like Stacy when he saw Gerard? It was like he's the one the moment you saw him? Well, Stacy, as I said before, when we saw her, uh, um, was instantaneous. So I walk in the room, I said, that's, uh, I, I don't think. That's long uh, away, and, yeah. Uh, we saw three, four more, but uh, for me it was <laughs> done. You know, so, and I said, that was, all right, yeah, and that was it. And uh, then what happened with, uh, the, the, at the end of the first season is John got, he was, he was, uh, he was, very young, he was 18, 19. Yeah, he was a young guy. And he was a bit uh, crazy, like we all were. And, and That's how 19 year olds are when they're the stars of a series, you know? <laughs> well, it went to his head a bit, and, uh, and he got. Uh, I wanted a pay raise, but that was not a discussion because the ratings were always the same. So it's not because he was in it that, <laughs> that it was going 7-5. No, it was 7 all the time. Right. It was number 10. And I'm sorry, just, yeah. It was number 10 um, all the time. Uh, season uh, 15 on, it was always number 10. So, so that, 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 that the, the problem there was he got the UI, I mean, very bad. Yeah. Um, you had the okay, moral clause. Okay, the pay thing. We had lunch about it. And it wasn't really a problem. It's just a good job. We can't do it because we're not making more ratings. We are at the max, and I don't think we'll go high on this on syndication. But, uh, okay. Then. But then he got into the DUI, and that was uh, totally forbidden in the comic book. Uh, yeah. You yeah. could not have anything where Superman, Supergirl, Superboy, Superdog, whatever, uh, uh, would uh, do something that was more uh, mm -hmm. bad for kids. So that was the thing. And then I had this moment of madness where I, I suddenly said, well, if I'm going to change God, why don't I change then Calvary played uh, right. uh, T.J. White, T. White <laughs> uh, the nephew of uh, Perry Apple. White, yeah. yeah. And uh, no, we, we did our research to be very, very... He was like the Jimmy Olsen. We of, were, we were, if you want, it was just different periods, but we were treating it like if it had happened before the film's 10 years. Right. Like when he was really funny. So, well, the which promos is, the was comic interesting. Too. Yeah. But it worked because it's an interesting factor here that we linked 
a lot of stuff to things that were possible, although the periods were 78 and 88, or 89, 90, 91, 92. Uh, but Lois had a sister. Who is Elaine? Who is in... And in, uh, in Supergirl. Supergirl, right. And Jimmy meets her now. So, so everything had this kind of right. connection. And um, Supergirl, you have a pulse of Superman. Right. I mean, it's it was uh, and again, it's a different. It's in period, the same universe, so but it's in right, '84. Right, right. It's not in '78. Yeah. But it's it's in the same. Um, I would say World. family ties, but in different periods. But they right. kind of don't bother you with different periods because the characters follow, which is something that I think I haven't seen much of Smallville, but I think there they they go crazy and they change a lot of things uh, and adapt them for the show uh, and successfully, so, so that's fine. But, uh, but uh, we definitely were very careful with that. and. Um, like the height of Superman and Superboy, you know. Right. So then I said, well, I'm going to fire him. Why don't I fire Jim Carver? Because I thought he was a bit not that funny. And he was okay. He was a good actor. But yeah, yeah. He was not a sidekick that had any energy, if you want. Not enough. I don't you know. wanted more humor, more. I wanted more. I wanted the personality right. with more, more personality, basically. Right. Uh, well, that, 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 then of course the other big decision was to change Luther, because the guy that we took was a disaster. Scott Wills, actor right? Actor for the first two. The third one, he was the last one he did. Was, he was much better because I had him train with a coach here for three days. She made miracles because if you compare him and. Uh, the fixer and the other one he's in to the last one where uh, Superboy loses his hair. Right. I mean, he right. loses his hair. Exactly. You will see a difference in Scott Wells. Luther Unleashed. That's you idea, will so. see him as an almost good actor compared to what he was. Right. So that, that, that's a very good friend of mine, which is a fantastic coach. She made him really in three days. The guy was different. Guy. Look wow. at it, you will be surprised. He reacts. You can certainly see a difference. Big difference. Yeah, then from the fixer to the last he episode not, of season he was, one. He was like that. He wasn't participating, he wasn't there. <laughs> and with her, he is there. And right. He was, the voice was there. Well, that take it because she was good looking and I was good looking. That certainly helps. People. Very few actors yes. that were not. Unless really they're character good. actors, you know. Character actors. Which Michael Collin was, character actor, pretty much. He was pretty good, the guy that played Metallo on Superboy. Oh, Michael Collin, yeah, yeah, he was good. Uh, he was good. He was great. A little he bit actually was great in a too. movie with George Hamilton and George Fitt Park called. Uh, it was a war movie, very, The Victors. Oh, all oh, right. Very good. Right. Movie. The three of them, and, and Michael had a big part. Uh, Michael had a big moment, uh, and, and that—that's by the way where I, I, I can finish the story about inventing pretty early on the movie, the little movie, the little movie, or the two little movies that follow with two-parter with different music, different everything, and we would work with the musician, a very talented Kevin Kiner, who is very talented. Uh, and I, I, I would listen to music and instinctively or knowledgeably or whatever, and then say, Kevin, can you try to give me something like The Godfather, Dracula, it's The Godfather. Right. If you listen to the music, listen. Oh, really? <laughs> well, okay, it's not the That's music great. of The Godfather, but it's that kind of yeah, uh, succubus. Right. It's Aida. That was a great episode. I like Aida, the music of Aida, an opera. Wow, wow. 
and Kevin was so clever uh, and so good that he was able to to make it work in there. Right, but right. you had themes of you know enormous power, so that right. gave it. I mean, the music and was Danny much more was powerful too, than, yeah. than than it would have been normally. It wasn't just the bang bang, you know, drums. And, so then, um, yeah, Sybil Sybil got it. She was good and uh, and sucker so. Yeah. yeah. And TJ was actually really good. I mean, he did really good, Jim Calvert, in that episode. He had a, he, an he interesting was good uh, he was good story there. in that episode, yeah. He, he suddenly it came alive there. He, well, it was he a good a, episode for him. He had, the, he had a better part, too, in a way, because he was less than yeah. for a banana. But <laughs> uh, anyway, then uh, I had this crazy idea of, uh, after seeing a tape of Sherman Hour, which I thought was fantastic. I can't remember what it was. I said, uh, "That's the guy. That's that's like so Right. But but the, the writers and everybody's with Come on! I mean, he's six four. He's six three. He's tall. Very six tall. Four. It's about six four. Yeah. Six four. According to Tracy Roberts, that's what she told me. No, like no, six he's four. Six four. He's towered and over a her. Big guy. <laughs> and uh, how can you do it? And then we came up with this thing that he had aged himself. Uh, yeah, that was great. That he had grown very six well. inches, that he had done all that stuff. <laughs> Fate and voice and taken the body Plastic up. surgery. And and, and, and and become Warren Eckworth. Poured acid on his vocal cords to lower his voice. Well, That's that, great. And that was completely <laughs> television comic book at, at his best. You know, fantasy yeah. land. Yeah. And I think, by the way, it... It's something that Aaron Spelling did in, in one of the Dallas or something, I think. And I think it was in my head. I don't know if I came up with, with it alone or I didn't remember that thing where I think Bobby in Dallas goes into the shower and is killed. But then oh, the Who out. Shot JR storyline. Oh, like I remember that. that, yeah. And I think yeah. that gave me the idea to do that, to really That's go all great. the way. And, and of course, then the show went even better. It was very suspenseful. He was, I mean, <laughs> he was mesmerizing, Sherman I'll Howard. I'll tell you that uh, absolutely, yes, so he absolutely uh, elevated the show. And then uh, we checked actors and uh, somehow somebody, I guess Lynn Thomas is said, oh, and Mitchell Smith is Oh yeah, and then I said, uh, look, and uh, oh, and I saw Weird Science, which I had Yeah, that's a classic. And I said, whoa, well, this kid is a star, and uh, that's what we need, because uh, yeah, yeah. he's funny, he's good looking, and, and he's got oomph, and, and I mean, he's, he's energy, and, yeah. and I I knew who he was immediately. When no, I he was a star. Yeah, he was just a, like, we had a that's that Weird Science star. guy, yeah. Huh? yeah. Yeah, when he saw him, you were like, that's a... Ian Mitchell Smith from Weird Science. That was oh, great casting. That was great casting. Excellent casting. It was, it was a star, and also he was very good. And, and right. let's face it, uh, the Funny. interaction between the four, uh, Luther, uh, uh, Smith, uh, Lana, and Superboy, is better. And, and it's got this. Uh, it's got this kind of uh, you know teen movie quality to it because Ian is always trying to hit on Lana and she's yes. always rejecting him you know exactly. and it's, it's funny to see him he keeps trying he keeps and he trying doesn't give up it's really yeah, funny he doesn't yeah. give up and, <laughs> and he's charming and going yeah. to scheme and, uh, but courageous I mean no no I mean, I mean yeah so that then it was I would say perfect casting and, and, uh, and, and they all were able to adapt to these different kind of scripts which were different films uh, like Hollywood which is completely out of the blue right so they goes back and forth. I wish they had done that it was a good stuff. episode I really liked that one it goes know, back it in good. time and well, no they had done was, a lot of that with Star Wars uh, Star Trek right right uh, on TV and I'm actually rerunning them I remember seeing that episode I, yeah I watched them all the time but I love them they're great and Freiburger had worked on Star Trek, but um, they hadn't been used um, um, uh, on anything else. I mean, it was Star Trek, and 
So, um, you know, I use it. Uh, uh, what, what it was I a good use? formula. It was a good formula to use, so where what? he goes back in time. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, and they did no, it again no, in the, season the, the, two, the, the, but... The, the, uh, they had a little bit in some Star Trek, a little bit of a different film. Right. A little bit where they go in the past or things. It's about like the same time period and... Yeah. But we went further where the tone was different. Mm -hmm. like a film is a film, a film is a film, a film is a film, and the tone is suspense, the whatever, right. the, 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 the characterization of the picture is different. And, and the Star Trek, they're the same Star Trek, but they're in the far west. But it's the same exact right. formula. Now, in Hollywood, it's completely different. Uh, the androids from the future were completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the father and mother of uh, uh, Superboy who come to Earth. Right. Kind of Lazenby was completely different. So I went further than than that. I really created these kind of mini, and we had only half an hour, so which makes it harder and easier because it's easier to shoot half an hour than an hour. Mm -hmm. so you got to fill it, uh, but it was hard to have it all in after right. our story in 20, in 20 minutes because of the commercial. So most episodes were done in like five days then. Shot by days. Yes, and, and, and what, 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 what I was saying uh, a couple of uh, uh, centuries ago, no, no, a couple of hours ago or an hour ago, was that. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? What was the question? Um, you're that the, the episode. You're the prosecutor. What's a, <laughs> sorry, what's the question? I didn't hear it. <laughs> Where were you on the night of the. Um, like. It took like five days to shoot each episode, yes, basically. Yes, and, and they took usually five days. I think exceptionally we might have done a Saturday wow. once or twice. Very, very well. Right, right. And Amazing. Uh, everything was very well oiled and mm -hmm. worked. Mm -hmm. But um, what was very interesting, and that's what I said I was going to say, is that uh, as an exec producer, you really have um, a completely unbelievable amount of work because you right. have to do everything in a way, script concluded, uh, because they write, but you correct, and you do, and you add, oh, I wrote some myself, but, but the fact is, it's a lot more work, and the director is a different director each time. He comes, he just directs the actors, he, you give him the tone, and say, okay, this is going to be Hollywood with that kind of atmosphere, this is going to be that kind of... And um, he does it, but you prepare, he doesn't, and you finish, he doesn't. You cut, you edit, you put the music, you do all that stuff. Right. And... Um, it's very, 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 very busy because you're doing what you never, never do, which is to actually um, almost direct the picture on top of producing it. But the director just is almost like a traffic cop. Right, right. Because that's he directs the traffic on the shoot with the script that you wrote with. The things you tell him that should the Bible of the show, which tells right. him development, and he's got to do it, and so he's really basically a hired hand, you know. Exactly. Comes for a week and goes, and uh, you are, and and so that's why every day you are shooting one, finishing the one before. Right. Goes on the air and preparing the next one. So it's, it's, it's a, a tremendous <laughs> amount of work. And, and I, of course, I was uh, uh, crazy then because I didn't realize it, and, and uh, I was a solo executive producer.
now you see the shows that are five, six, seven. Right. Right. Like producers would write and collaborate. And so you worked hard, really hard. I did everything. <laughs> I was running on the wow. editing. I was this. I was doing that. And once I got in it, I, I, I really. So yeah, you were I in the editing it. room. You were editing the show. Oh, you yeah, actually yeah. were editing it. Oh, wow. I was editing. That's great. Well, well, that's why they were so good. I mean, you just put your heart into it, you know, and it really yeah, just I mean, shows. You know, too. I, 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 I learned one thing in, in, in especially in the last years to be humble and and uh, the fact is you have to know what you can do well and know what you can't do. Right. And once you accept that principle, then you succeed. I mean, that's that's something that uh, actually my point on Facebook, it's a good phrase. Um, you you have to do what you know according to your you have to be honest talent, with yourself. Honest with yourself and know what to do with that talent. So in my case, I'm a pretty good producer because even earlier on, but much more now, I collaborate. I'm not the solo voice. I'm not the guy who says, it's got to be this way. I listen to the electrician if he has an idea. Right. I listen to everybody. Now, there are moments, yes, when I will say, no, that is the direction and that's it. Right. Right or wrong. Because it's not, the, you need a captain at one point. Right. But the captain, if he's clever, has three or four officers who can influence the whole trip. Right. They're almost as important as the captain. But the captain has to have a final say in some cases. So it's a bit exactly. it's a bit like that. But that is the difference with auteurs who have to write, to direct and it's right. their vision hundred percent. Exactly. And nothing else. So you're more collaborative, you think, now than you used to be? Oh, I, I was. I was always collaborative, but uh, now I'm. I guess also the experience and all that. It's uh, much easier now because, obviously, uh, yeah, the guys who talk with me, uh, you know, and, and see knowing my track record. I mean, it's easier to convince them or uh, the ones who are not as established uh, will be easier to convince on my side, but I will very quickly make them understand that they can tell me you're wrong, and I will change on 90%, you know, or more around, and 180%. And, and I think that's, that's the kind of producer that uh, I am in general. And, and I have some idols like Sam Spiegel, the, the Lawrence of Arabia, and uh, right. Bridge on the River Kwai, and uh, fantastic pictures. Those are great movies. Uh, and uh, also, um, uh, well, David Lean, of course, was a director, but he had Sam Spiegel, and Sam was a great producer. And uh, Robert Evans, when he was head of Paramount, uh, he Produced under his uh, reign, Godfather, oh, Chinatown. Yeah. He, uh, he did so Rosemary, many movies, Baby, so many classics. Love Story, all right. that were done and uh, supervised by. And he uh, was the studio head too. <laughs> and he was, and and uh, I had met him once uh, at the restaurant where I was having dinner with a um, director. Um, uh, who introduced me to Evans was leaving you know, and all and um, and I was already much more humble and less arrogant because before <laughs> I would never introduce myself to somebody that wasn't introduced to me or I knew. Was right. a typical arrogant idiot, you know. And um, the Hollywood you know, swagger. Say me, I don't say I love it. Yeah. And uh, what happened is that uh, with uh, uh, Evans, I saw him again at a party 
club long ago with uh, Deborah actually, and uh, and I did something I would never have done before, where I I, I, I went to him and said, oh, Bob, you know, we met with, with Michael Cimino at that dinner, and I said, oh yeah, I remember it. And I said, look, I gotta tell you something, you're my idol, you're, you're the best. And I was so touched, you know, was like, you know, for me to do that, that's a lot of big problems, because 20 years ago, I would never. Right, I would right. never introduce myself or talk to myself. Hey, wow. I like your picture, you know. Or, and here I was, you know, and we took a picture together. It's on my site with Bob Evans. And, uh, oh, that's great. And Bob wrote a book. I'll have to uh, check that out. <laughs> the, the Kid Stays in the Picture, which is a very good book. And, uh, I've wrote, read that book, actually. It's, it's a good And book. he says in each chapter, very nice guy. Uh, I've been sitting, uh, but 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 it's it's great when you. When He's you, like a Hollywood legend, Robert Evans. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I told him, and uh, very pleasant. But this is kind of sad. But in his book, he always says, "A movie is a movie. A movie is a movie. A movie is a movie." The director's a director, director's a director, director's a director. I said that earlier. Right, but right. That, that's Bob Evans' philosophy, and it's very true. I mean, it's funny. You don't show change people. <laughs> but, um, but he did take, you know, footage from the movies, from the studio, and he went in there and did some re-editing himself. Oh, he got Several of the movies. He got no, he was a, he was a man. But he was very so smart. He's Very smart. And, yeah. Uh, and then he came it's back genius. after a very difficult period. Uh, he came back. And, right, right. Yeah. I think it was that whole Charles Manson thing or something like that. No, or, no, it was something in, in New York uh, with the Cut Club. Oh. And, and he was also doing a lot of drugs and they accused him of that. Plus the, the, thought he had killed somebody in New York. Oh, and yeah. Right. Terrible thing. I knew it involved something about murder. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, after that, I must say the show just, you know, got it written, and uh, uh, those, those uh, basic principles were followed, and it worked. I mean, uh, obviously it worked, and the only reason that uh, there wasn't a fifth or sixth season, which everybody wanted, I mean, yeah. uh, and Warners wanted to have Superman on TV. Yeah, they wanted to do Lois and Clark, exactly. so... Exactly, so they started being possible and, right. by having DC Comics, because we had to deal with them anyway, uh, say no to all the stories. So they, act, they would approve them with us, and the week after we get them, say, no, we don't approve them. Warner, they said no. Right. So finally we sued them and uh, we settled them and, and then uh, they, they, they killed the Superman 5, mm. Superman Reborn. Right. Uh, which was very, because very, in 93, very did you try to reacquire the rights in 93? I mean, were you no, looking no, into that? No, no, sold the rights. You sold the rights, right. No, no, this was in 91. Oh, 91, okay. 1991, we were writing that film. But you still had the rights during well, the Superboard, Super right? Yeah. We had all the rights. Uh, and Superboard then was closed right. by Viacom, us, it was an idea that my father had, and Warner's to DC. Because they didn't have anything to do with the production. Wow. Uh, agreed, and it was frozen, and then after five years or seven years of negotiation, I was able to freeze it uh, for the first season. Right. And come out on DVD, and, uh, and the others will come out in time. Don't worry. We're all waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, I think it will just be a... Uh, what do you think will make it possible, a, a season two, three, four release of Superboy? I think the the super mania that's going on and the new super Superman with a very good director. The new Superman movie, right. Chris Nolan. The guy. The producer, yeah. 
for no, and the other guy who did 300. Yeah. Very good. So I think those two guys were really good. So they were really good. Really good show. And, and they should totally. The stop. buzz of the new movie, then they'll go back and you know, say, No, they yeah. got to start from scratch. I mean, right. I would start Galactic, uh, really all, all that. And, <laughs> And still have Metropolis and your favorite character. But, yeah. But they could be encapsulated in a bottle. Or Forget about all the Krypton stuff, you know. He, he was a baby and his parents sent him here. And yeah, no, no. <laughs> we, 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 Just start right into the action. I mean, yeah, you know, they, they, and that's what Superboy did. It, it forgot all about, it skipped that whole, you know, he was on Krypton, sent here as a baby. It just boom, right into the oh, action, yeah, you know? Right into the action. No, yeah. here, here, and everybody it knows him. And, uh, there should be, uh, I, I don't know if, I, if I'm in the movie, I would start it with him fighting a galactic war. <laughs> fighting That's great. Alien. Right. Start the movie. The middle of a fight. A gigantic fight where he's hurling uh, pieces of planet. Yeah, uh, yeah. At these huge... Uh, Gigantic droids are coming, right? And right. Uh, and then perhaps he gets hurt, or perhaps he gets uh, very old, or I mean, you know, <laughs> and then other events, right? Yeah, uh, and 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 still keep the metropolis. It's possible to keep it, but um, I don't think that that's what they are. I I. I it was well done, and I think it's done, you know. Uh, yeah. And Smallville, uh, which kind of repeats it. And, and Smallville has its own formula, even though we know that... I don't think Lois and Clark or Smallville would have been on television if it weren't for Superboy. I mean, because... No, of course not. Yeah, I mean... Well, that was definitely uh, why they did the second time. Yeah. The fourth and the fifth. But, uh, no, there's no movie has... Right, right. It's got to be really. Uh, it's got to have its own, you know. It's got to be its own movie. It can't be a Superman the movie. No, it's got to. You know, remake or tribute to. No, it you is know, not. It's your first, well your first movie with Christopher Reeve. It's got to be something <laughs> that has never been seen. Uh, um, it really. Uh, but we had a lot of that in our script, Superman Reborn, but, but now at the time, I, I think it's even more important to have something right. really, you know, wow. Right. And, uh, and stuck in the action. And, right. Uh, Ever since Superman 4, they've been trying to get these movies, you know. My God. I mean, uh, you were trying Superman Reborn, and then... They, tr you know, they went and they did it on their own, or and it wasn't until 2006. Well, they were born they sabotaged because they, they, right. they, 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 they wanted, wanted us out. So they, they nixed, they nixed, they nixed with DC. Right. And then they did the same thing with Superman. You know, I never gave up. Right. You know, so. yeah. But uh, clearly. Uh, There's a lot to do with Superman. I mean, right. Um, it's, it's just, I think it's just exploring the Superman universe. And one can find villains. Yeah. I mean, comic books, the, there's so much material in there you can grab from. You know, it's know it's so many good stories. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, we'll see what they do with it. It'll be very interesting. Now, Tracy was telling me that you guys at one time had talked about doing a spin-off show with Lex Luthor and Darla. Do you remember anything about that? It's possible. It's possible. I mean, there were a lot of ideas because they yeah. were going well. And it's possible that we thought of that. Uh, Jared, I don't think, uh, perhaps at one point, uh, somebody said, uh, I'm looking for Jared. You can't think anybody else. Uh, but he wasn't in the list of the guys to play Superman. The problem, uh, then it was this height problem. 
because he was six foot, not six four. And more than anything, Chris Reeve. I had lunch with him at the Carlisle in, in ninety one, and I uh, had a wonderful lunch. Uh, and uh, he would have done it. Right. He would have done it more, and he was still in great shape. He would have done That's it. That's great. He liked the script, and he even says in some interview. You know, or before everybody said we were monsters, and we said, uh, but now it's back into the Salkine's hands, and they, they do what they have to do, and, <laughs> and somewhere that we do. Do you remember anything about the telemovies? Because Viacom promised the fans telemovies after it was announced the show was going to end on season four, and of course it never happened. I mean, I got a letter from Betsy Vorse. I don't know if you know who that yes, was. Yes, I remember I, that. Man. Yeah, she mailed me a letter, and because I was so, I was just a fan. I was a teenager, you know. Yeah. So I was like, "No, don't end the show. I love the show." And I wrote her a letter, and she wrote Betsy me back Moore. and said they planned on that you guys planned on doing telemovies. Telemovies, like uh, TV movies of Superboy. Oh yeah. After the show ended, and. Oh yeah, yeah, telemovies. No, oh, I think we, you know, would have continued and it was very great, but, um, okay. It was just the trouble they were causing. It was the, becoming impossible. Right. Because we one, one week they would say yes, and the next week they would say no. Right. Do you remember anything about the death of Superman storyline being one of the storylines for the movie? Because um, in Comic Book Value Monthly, I can't remember off the top of my head what issue it is, but they were saying that it was going to be the death of Superboy, the last episode of season four, yeah. and then it would continue in a series of movies where he would, you know, come back eventually. I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> where do you hear that? I mean, in a, in a, um, ca a comic book value monthly, a magazine. Uh, that's possible. Kind of, yeah. Uh, I know that we, um, we definitely wrote in Superman Reborn, Superman died. Right. And uh, they took it in the comic books two years after whatever because yeah. of course the script belonged to Warner. Right. Because it was the script. They couldn't use it without us, but they couldn't use anything in it. Yeah. yeah. They, couldn't, they couldn't make it. They could take it no, yeah, no, here no, and there and rework it. The yeah. They could do anything. <laughs> so yeah. uh, DC took that idea of killing it. That was a huge, huge sellout comic book. I mean, everybody fell for it. Superman is really going to die, you know. I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> I worked at a comic book store when that came out, and I remember people standing in line to get this comic book. Oh, I know. There was a line out of the store, and I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> I know, absolutely crazy. Wow. But, um... And that all started with basically Superman Reborn, the idea and the script. Superman well, died. Uh, all the guys read it. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and it got some very good reviews on the internet, the script. And uh, it was definitely more exciting. Yeah. Return. Yes. Yeah. Superman Return sounds too much like Batman Returns. I thought it was kind of, uh, kind of like plastic, you know? Kind of, they didn't put a lot of thought into the title. It was very much like uh, Juan. And, uh, I mean, a ten-year-old could have thought of that. Superman yeah, Returns. Yeah, I mean, Luther you know? again with the more stuff. And yeah. Land, you know. <laughs> well, anyway, it's, uh, so, do you want to talk about what you're doing today, Ilya? Uh, well, yeah, I'm. I'm Today I'm, okay. doing, uh, uh, yeah, I'm working on the bottom of the uh, heaven, which is going to be a mega, gigantic picture, uh, right. uh, epic terror. Is that going to be in 3D? Yeah. And, uh, awesome. It will be, uh, I think, uh, very, very exciting because we, we have a popcorn level and we have a lot of subtitles. Right. Ecology, family, but it's going to be at the, definitely very fresh. 
Yeah. I read some right. parts of the script. I, you know, I couldn't help when I was working in your office. I peeked yeah. a little bit, but it was pretty good. I liked yeah. it. it was, I mean, well, I mean, the first draft, is, for first draft, is very good. And, yeah. And it's, uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's going well. It's uh, definitely going well. So that's uh, that's going to be. Uh, okay. That's great. Well, we all look forward to seeing that. <laughs> and a kind of new, also, genre, really. Um, yeah. You always do these really cool movies that have like, um, I mean, there's always they always take place in a genre, you know. I mean. Yeah, well, they, 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 they that's they great. I love that. Of, uh, is that the King Kong or that the snowman is much more accessible, ten feet tall, than forty feet tall, uh, and one can relate to him more. And I found a way to make him lovable. Uh, and not hate him when he kills people. And uh, that was the hardest thing that took me uh, 17 years to come up with that idea. And I couldn't come up with all the scripts were not really yeah. because we were not making him nice. And I, I wanted the audience to like it. Making him too nice, yeah. <laughs> no, but I wanted him to like him. But at the same time, it's it's there. Yeah, yeah. It's there, but there's a reason yeah. for. When you for can him. pull that off, that's really good. That's you know, I mean, that's like major character development. Well, well it, it, it's major. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's exactly what uh, will make the picture work. Yeah, yeah. We're really excited about that film. Very exciting. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stuff. I mean, Gerard says you've been working on it for a long time because I'm talking to Gerard and I said, Yeah, well, he's working on, uh, he's all, What's he doing now? And I said, Well, he's working on the Abominable Snowman movie. And he goes, Oh, he's been doing that forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can, we couldn't find the buddy. Yeah. We couldn't find the, the solution and we found it. Right. And, uh, the missing link. <laughs> it's, it's, in a way, it is, without saying it, but he is the potential missing link. Right, right. That's, that's good. Or no, no, I think we'll be... Stacy's got a part in this movie? In this new movie? Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't so. seen it today. <laughs> I'm, uh, I might write one for her. <laughs> she looked great. She looked great. I love Stacy. <laughs> no, she's fantastic. should put Gerard in there, too. You could, then you could uh, have a... Promote Superboy at the same time a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, I would love to put them, in, uh, but uh, you know, it has to be, it has to, it has to make yeah, sense. Yeah, it has to make uh, sense. Just throwing them in there for no yeah, good reason. I, 